All right, welcome. This is the 6.6 .6 race at Go Homework Solutions. All right, number the ready part here, okay? So, rotation symmetry, okay? What fraction of turning does this wagon wheel below need to turn in order to appear the very same rotation as it does to the right? Okay, very simple. This has how many sides or parts? Eight parts. We know that formula, 360 divided by the S or the number of sides here. It's basically how many um, parts of it is in the wheel. It's 8. 360 divided by 8 gets you 45. So the degree of rotation is 45. If you rotate this 45 degrees, right, same object. Another 45 degrees, which is 90, same object. Okay, that's what it means. Okay, but again, remember this formula, 360 divided by S or the number of sides or parts there <coughs> is. Two, same thing here. But this has five parts. They consider this a uh, propeller. 360 divided by 5 equals to 72. That will be your degrees of rotation. Very easy if you know the formula. Okay. What fraction here? The fair wheel, this Ferris wheel has 18 parts. 360 divided by 18 gets you 20. That's the degrees of rotation. So again, the degrees of rotation formula. 360 divided by S or N which represents the amount of parts or the, or the number of sides the polygon or object has, okay? And she gets you the object, okay? But again, it has to be regular. It has to be symmetrical in that sense, okay? All right, good. Set part. Find angles of rotation for regular polygons, line of symmetries, and diagonals. Here, you're going to draw the line of symmetry for each polygon, fill in the tables, okay? We know that right here that the number of sides here triangle three there's three lines of symmetry or square four lines of symmetry right five pentagon five heptagon six seven hexagon no sixes uh hexagon right six sides seven hept eight oct right the number of sides is the same amount as the number of lines of symmetry N to N. Nothing changes. Okay. Now, what about this? Numbers of diagonals. Okay. There is no diagonal for a rec uh, for a rectangle. If it's three sides, it has no diagonals. But if it is a square, it has two. Right from this corner to this corner. From five, it has five. From six, it has nine. From seven. It has 14 from 8, it has 20. It grows. There's actually a formula for the number of diagonals. So if it's an n object, okay, it's n, then times n minus 3, because again, that minus 3 just comes from the vertex here, then you want to divide by 2. Do you need to remember this formula? No. Okay, uh, but you should understand that there is actually a pattern for a relationship between the number of sides in a polygon and the numbers of diagonals okay here lines of symmetry it's one to one n n but here number of sides n but it's an n parentheses n minus three divided by two for the numbers of diagonals all right number six all right if it's a 12-sided polygon, what is the angle of rotation? Again, let n equals to 12. 360 divided by 12 gets you 30. 7, this is 20. 360 divided by 20 gets you 18. That's your degrees of rotation. 8, same thing. n equals to 15. 360 divided by 15 equals to 24. 9, we know now that it equals to 18. So we set up the equation. 360 divide by n because we do not know because that is the number of sides we don't know that and we set that equal to 18 okay what do we do we cross multiply or I multiply x to both sides okay get you 360 equals to x times 18 divide 18 to both sides 360 divided 18 gets me 20 so it's a 20 solid polygon because 360 divided by 20 gets you 18 how do I know that you want to check your answer look up here same answer same thing here how many sides okay so again same process 360 divided by x equals to 20 how do i get 20 it says it right here rotational symmetry equals to 20 cross multiply 
divide 20 to both sides. 360 divided by 20 gets you x, which is equal to 18. All right. Next, this is some review on rotations, okay, and reflections. All right. Um, here, I showed it <coughs> to you in terms of a uh, rotation. Right, but remember this reflection is just a rotation of 180 degrees. Okay, that's why when I did the perpendicular line here, okay, um, that just shows it to you. Okay, All right, but reflection equal distance. Do you see the green line here? It's equal distance. So the distance from green to this line of reflection is the same distance from this green to this line of reflection. Okay, how do I show that? I drew it goes up one across four. Across four, up one. Do you see how it makes the same triangle on both sides? It's the same distance. Okay? You could calculate it if you want using Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. Okay? That was what? Two sections below? Same thing here. Right? Same distance. That distance from A to A prime is going to follow this <coughs> uh, green line hypotenuse distance. Okay? What is that, right? It is from going up to across one, two, three, four, five ish, five and a half, okay? Right? The distance here is this green line is going to be the same distance to this green line to this A prime, okay? Because reflection is the same distance. All right. Same thing here for the triangle, okay? Again, I just wanted to show you how uh, it reflects perfectly. Right, the green line shows the line that it's um, <coughs> the distance to each line. Okay, there you go. And this one, this one, I decided to actually give you the number here. Okay, so do you see from B, it went straight down. It had the length of five, so that means this is also going to have a length of five. That's how I got this dot. Okay. Uh, from A to the line of reflection was four, so it also was four. Okay. Uh, from D, I don't, I didn't put the number here, but I could even count one, two, three, four, five. Right, five. So green line is also going to be five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Same thing with the C. The the C here. Okay. Whatever distance that was, it's the same distance there. Okay. You can use a ruler, or here I just looked at making the triangles. Okay. But again, reflection has the same equal distance to and from the line of reflection. All right, 13. Okay. <coughs> Here, it says to draw the line of reflection, we already have the two images. Okay. Watch this. Do you see how it goes from X to X prime? I draw a line and I cut it in half. Why? Because it has to have equal distance. So if the whole thing here was one, two, three, right? If the whole distance from X to X prime was three, right? Half of three is 1.5. That's why I went one and a half. That's what's half, right? From Z to Z prime, uh, let's just count it. It's the orange one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, eight was your total distance, so the line of reflection cuts it in half, right? Because you want equal distance to the line of reflection, so half of eight is four. So one, two, three, four. Perfect. Same thing with the blue. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So it should be three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Same distance. Again, the line of reflection has equal distance from the object. Same thing here, right? I drew it, cut it in half, drew it, cut it in half, drew it, cut it in half, drew it, cut it in half. I just want to make a note here. The line of reflection here, line of reflection here, ha is the uh, is is the equation. If it's horizontal, I think that is just x equals to negative one. Okay, because this. This green line here was x equals to 1, right? It is a vertical line, okay? There you go. Those are all your solutions, okay, for 6.6. .6. There you go.